Thank you. Our uh, next speaker is um, Yusuf Yazici. Uh, he is the CEO of Samumed, and um, he'll, be, he'll be next to speak to us. Thank you, and I'd like to thank the organizers for giving us the opportunity to present our findings, and I'm here to present our data on behalf of my co-authors and investigators. This is our disclosures. So as you know, in the U.S., it's estimated that approximately about 35 million males are affected by endogenetic alopecia, and two products have been approved in the last couple of decades, minoxidil and tenesteride. There is a need for alternative treatment options for AGA, which uh, hopefully improve efficacy and definitely improve safety. And some of them had conducted a phase one clinical trial to evaluate the safety, tolerability, and efficacy of a topical uh, small molecule solution, SM04554, and uh, in male subjects with androgenic alopecia. So this is an overview of our protocol. This was a double-blind randomized placebo-controlled study as a phase one, with three different uh, concentrations of our drug versus placebo in males 18 to 60 years of age with a Norwood Hamilton classification score of 4, 5, 6, uh, and 7. Each cohort was 10 patients, a randomized 8 to treatment to the placebo, and they were treated for 14 days and then were observed off treatment for another 14 days. We checked the typical safety parameters for a phase 1 protocol and also were able to uh, administer the men's hair growth questionnaire to get some ideas about potential efficacy to help us with our next phase trials. This is the schema of how the trial was conducted. It was a uh, escalated doses, so we started with 0.05 percent and active after 15 days of treatment. Blinded the safety review committee, looked at the safety profile, and then green lighted the dosing of the second cohort. After the second cohort was completed, again the safety review committee that day 15 uh, reviewed the uh, safety profiles and then green lighted the third cohort, and we had the same after the third cohort too. And safety analysis were done for all throughout the 28 days. As you can see, the last treatment day was at 14, and uh, they were followed up after 28 days. These are demographics. As I mentioned, there were eight patients in each cohort, uh, with two placebos, so with the three cohorts, six placebos, and one patient was lost to follow up in the first cohort. They're both in their 40s, mostly Caucasian patients. This study was conducted in Australia. And you can see the breakdown of the Norwood Hamilton yes. So as a phase one study, this was a, uh, the primary outcome was looking at safety events. So out of the 29 uh, subjects, we had 11 subjects who reported 15 adverse events. And there were no serious adverse events or those limiting toxicity supported. As you can see, there was really no difference among the treatment cohorts and the, and the vehicle control. And there was no increased incidence of AEs as the dose were estimated. Looking at the safety events in a little more detail, uh, the, all the advanced events summaries are up there. There was a couple of eye irritation, some back pain, ocular hyperemia, phlebitis, vacuoles, dry mouth, joint dislocation, and, and the vehicle headaches, acne fatigue, seasonal allergy, and sunburn. No local adverse events were uh, observed. There was one case of minimal erythema in the vehicle group, which resolved on its own, and it wasn't classified as an adverse event. Uh, most adverse events were considered by the study investigators to be unrelated to the study medication. There was one adverse event of eye irritation in the highest cohort, 0.45%. was considered related to study medication per the investigator. It was mild in intensity and resolved without treatment. For all cohorts, Laboratory parameters, EKG monitoring, vital signs were unremarkable during the study and no clinically significant values or changes from baseline were, were reported for any of the subjects for the duration of the study. Uh, looking at the PK results, these are the ones that had any exposure. The 0.05% had no systemic exposure. 0.15% three patients had, um, you can see the C-max of 0.202 and 0.45% had seven patients who had a C-max of 0.202. 188 and the quantification, quantification range was 0 0.1 up to 150. And we also administered, as I mentioned, to uh, have some idea about the efficacy, the men's hair growth questionnaire. 
uh, you can see on the left hand of uh, the slide the first 15 days when they're getting dose and the next 15 days when they're not uh, having any uh, medication or vehicle applied. And these were, as I mentioned, double blind placebos uh, all throughout the 28 days. And the first question asked since the start of the study, I can see my bold spot getting smaller and the answers, the positive answers here are strongly agree or agree. Negatives were no opinion, disagree or strongly disagree and received the positive uh, percent responses and the number of patients. And in second questionnaire, the question, because of treatment I have received since the start of the study, the appearance of my hair is better, little better, those are the positive ones. And uh, again, you can see before, during treatment and post-treatment. Uh, the third question asked about how would you describe the growth of your hair? Again, uh, you can see before and after there were decrease in the placebo responses and slight increases in the patients who were treated at day 28, two weeks after they stopped uh, applying the medication. And question four was, since the start of the study, how effective do you think this treatment has been in slowing down your hair loss? And again, effective and somewhat effective are the ones shown here. And uh, despite the small number of patients, we actually achieved a statistically significant difference between placebo and the middle dose, 0.15% at day 28, which was the end of the study. And uh, the fifth question is, compared to the beginning of the study, which statement best describes your satisfaction with the appearance of the hair on the top of your head? Again, very satisfied and satisfied responses are shown. Again, uh, some signal size for uh, compared to placebo in the middle dose. So just to summarize, uh, SM04554 appears safe and well tolerated when those daily for 14 days and through the 14 day follow up post treatment period. There were no serious adverse events or those limiting costs reported. Uh, 11 of the 29 subjects reported a total of 15 adverse events in the study. There were no increases in adverse events with the escalated doses. Majority of the adverse events were reported only once and were mild in intensity and not related to the study medication as determined by the uh, investigator and systemic exposure was low and was dose dependent. Uh, looking at investigators, looking at the global photographs, notice no change in the hair growth from day 15 to day 28. And uh, we also looked at, as I mentioned, some efficacy exploratory endpoints. And day 28, there were trends towards increased hair growth in some of the treated subjects and slowing of hair loss in some of the treated subjects, which actually statistical significance second most cohort to about 50% uh, solution. This has led us to uh, design and conduct and finish our phase two trial, which we very recently finished. And uh, this was, this time we took the 0.15% dose, which was the middle dose in the previous trial, and uh, also had a 0.25% dose, which was somewhat in between the 15 and the 45 that we used in the phase one and took patients 18 to 55 years of age with a Norwood Hamilton classification of 4, 5, 5A, 5B, and 6. And this was again double blind randomized uh, placebo controlled and uh, for three months treatment and 45 days observation period for a total of 135 days. And, and each cohort was randomized one to one to one with 100 patients uh, targeted. And uh, we had our clinical outcomes from questionnaires, CAP, and also the imaging outcome, macrophotography uh, for haircut at days 45, 90, and 135. Uh, we were, and also we appreciate the organizing, organizing committee for allowing us to add this data to our accepted abstract because we literally just got this uh, a day before we came here. And so we're able to get the safety data uh, here, and we're working on finalizing the efficacy analysis. I hope to present that very soon. So this is the demographics of our phase two, where we had 102, 102, and 98 patients in each cohort. As you can see, again, they're in their 40s, mostly Caucasian patients. This was done in the United States with roughly 20 sites and all patients. I'd like to thank both our investigators and our patients for uh, all their participation in our work. You can see the breakdown of the different Hamilton, uh, Norwood Hamilton uh, scale. And in the safety summary, we had one serious adverse event, and that was in the vehicle. There were no serious adverse events in the uh, treated cohorts, either with 0.15 or 0.25. Uh, 
And looking at the related adverse events, there were 26 in 21 subjects in the first cohort, 20 in 14 subjects in the second cohort, and 31 in 21 subjects in the vehicle, not very different from treatment. And looking at the most common related adverse events, again, there was these were erythema, paresthesia, pruritus, and hypersensitivity at the administration site. Again, 17 and 15 in 0.15, 9 and 6 in 0.25, and 14 and 11 in the vehicle treatment patients, not that different, again, from treatment. And uh, I will end here, and thank you very much for the opportunity to present uh, our data from our phase one and phase two. Uh, questions, question and answers. So, um, please, does anybody have any questions? Yes. California. First, I, I want to thank all you uh, up there for trying to bring something on the market. I can tell you from us, the general population, our biggest statement is please hurry up. I even heard it yesterday. So, the faster the better. Um, or, excuse me, for the Replicel, uh, Dr. Hoffman, they didn't they have, um, about two years ago, I know that they were talking about, maybe the end of 2013 even, having, um, starting the trial in Germany. Could you explain, I, I guess there's been a, a delay, why, why on that originally? Yeah, that's a very easy to answer. <coughs> um, we were very close to start a trial in Germany. But I give you an explanation. If you would be the manufacturer of a soft drink like Coca-Cola, a ready-to-market, and the manufacturer just quits, then you have to start from scratch again. And we were really ready to go, and we have a pro proprietary culture medium, and the only manufacturer was just got closed, and we had to start all over again with all validation, and that's the reason why it all takes so long. So, but it's now all fixed, and next year, we do this trial. Okay, thank you. Well, the other thing first for the um, Sanumid trial, could it, with all the prompt, the adverse reactions for the vehicle, could it be possible that maybe there's something in the vehicle itself causing some of the adverse reactions? The adverse reactions are all very mild and just one time, so, uh, and they're in a few number of patients out of the hundred, uh, a minority, a small minority had any reaction. <coughs> So I think it's just a factor of putting something on the skin and uh, not a real concern for the vehicle or for the drug for that matter. Okay, thank you. Next question, Valerie. Uh, my question is for the last speaker. Uh, would you care to mention what your mechanism is, what your drug is doing? Uh, so we're not disclosing the target at this time because we still have some ongoing MOA studies but they should be uh, finished soon, and uh, we're hoping to publish that uh, in the next year, hopefully. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, any other questions? We have around 20 seconds for questions. Oh, we have George Cozzarellis with a question. Uh, Dr. Lee is wondering, are there any uh, types of patients that respond better to cryotherapy in Alpitriata? Would you use it, for example, on patients that have been resistant to interlesional steroids? Is there a, some subtype that you think would respond best? Because superficial cryotherapy is very convenient and painless. The main target of superficial cryotherapy is mild form of alopecia areata. And uh, especially in children, vulnerable to side effects and pain from intralesional infection. So the indication usually is confined to mild form of alopecia, for example, less than 50% of scalp involvement. Quick question for Dr. Hoffman. Ralph, um, are the tendon injections using allogeneic cells or autologous cells? No, no, it's all autologous. autologous. Yeah, yeah. So we are an autologous gang. 
Okay, we now have to go on to our next speaker.